Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what creative things I have been working on this week. If you caught last Friday's tutorial, you saw the braided table runner that I made, the poinsettia and the Santa Claus on the backing, and then just a bright, colorful, fun Christmas fabrics. By the time you see this video, this should be listed in my Etsy shop if anyone's interested. I am back to slowly knitting some dishcloths. So I finished a dishcloth. It has not been blocked yet. As you can tell, the way I knit them, it tends to make them curl up like this. But after I block them, they lay nice and flat and it's fine. If I actually get enough of them, I try to wait until I get 10 of them made before I put them in the shop. And I think right now I have two, maybe three. With my patrons, I'm still working on the Mondo bag. It takes four of these panels to make the bag. It came with that pre-printed interfacing with all the little gridded squares on it for two and a half inch squares. So I went ahead and I sewed it all on there, stitched it in one direction and the other. And for this pattern, it says to just go ahead and leave it like that. And then for the lining, they have you using fusible interfacing. It feels kind of backwards to a bag for me, so I went ahead and put batting on mine, and I quilted it up. As you can see, I just did a simple grid lines with it. I thought that would go nicely with the way the bag is put together and the fact that it's already sewn in a grid. I love the fabrics in this bag. Once finished, this bag will also go in the shop because in reality, I can't keep every bag just because I love the fabrics. I will take this time to enjoy seeing them and working with them and then pass that love on to the next person. Now I did make a couple more bags this week too. I was seem to be doing maybe one bag a week, but now I've got two. I was given a partial jelly roll. I think maybe it had to be over two years ago because I'm pretty sure Rob was still here when I received it. So I'm thinking about two and a half, three years ago. And I just refound it when I was going through and no, I wasn't really, I was going to say when I was cleaning and organizing the fabric room, but no, I wasn't. I was just kind of moving things around looking for something else. And I found this and I thought, well, instead of having it sit there and just keep touching it and moving it everywhere, let me go ahead and use it. So I made two bags and I'll show you those in a minute, but I also still have some pieces left over. So what I did is I took two strips and stitched them together. And I just did that with all of the pieces that I had. This is not stitched, it's just the way it's been printed. I thought that was really kind of a, a neat little touch to this jelly roll. Kind of gives you that look of almost like the calculator strips when we use our scraps like that without actually having to piece it. So what I was thinking is to sew the strips together and then to go ahead and use them as the, like a rail fence type quilt design. But then I also wanted to use the long strips and I wanted to incorporate everything in different ways. So this is what I did. I started with this bag and on this side, you can see that I went ahead and I just stitched them together as in the rail fence style. So that's what this whole side looks like. But then I had the thought that it's kind of fun to have different sides of the bag. So when I flipped it over, I just used the strips going this way. But I thought it'd be really fun to incorporate these so you still have that patchwork look. So I used two of those to showcase that. And it was really good. I just randomly sewed everything together. So it was really kind of good that I can have the two purples to bookcase it on the top and bottom with the little polka dots. And then I had two of the leaves that were there. So it just worked out that I had these sewn together, these sewn together, you know, all the way through like that. Oh, so I had these sewn together, my mistake, because we still have the bottom of the bag, of course. So that worked out really well, and I loved the way that looked. And I still had all the strips sewn together, and I needed handles, so I just went ahead and had them be reversible like this so that you have two different designs on each side. And I thought since I'm doing everything a little bit quirky on each side, I did my sort of matchstick quilting going this way. And then on this side, I went this way to follow the strips. I used a green, an orange, a blue, and a yellow, I believe, for my threads, just to give it 
again, to add a little bit of extra color to it, add a little quirkiness without being like wonky or anything like that. Just a little bit of a nod to all the fun colors that are in here, especially with these strips like this. Of course, I got my little label. I didn't forget that. And then on the inside, I've really been enjoying doing the two separate colors or the two separate fabrics, I should say. So I had a fat quarter of this purple and I had a fat quarter of this blue and purple with the stripes. There you go, get a better look at that. I have, let me just turn this inside out so we can get a better look at the lining. So there's this purple and it kind of has this almost of a cross hatched look to it, but you, it's, it's very subtle to it. And then on this side, I have my zipper pocket and I added one of my fun little tassels and I put a fun bright stripe on the inside for the pocket. Purple little zipper so it blends in. And I also use this fabric and I made a key leash is what they call it. So it's inside your tote bag, you can hook your keys to it. So when you're digging through looking for your keys, you know you can just grab this and pull it out and that's where they are. I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the last Whip It Wednesday video that I just really like having the lining sewn in. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that with all of my bags. It kind of makes it look a little bit tighter and neater in there. And also it's really good for the functionality of it to not have that lining popping out all the time. Now this bag, these bags are a little bit smaller than last week. So these are only, they're just about 12 inches tall and about 14 inches wide. So I think for someone who didn't want such a big tote bag that this one is a little bit better of an option. And while these fabrics really aren't my style, I really love the way this bag turned out. But my favorite one is this bag. There were a few of the already cut rail fence pieces left over, maybe four or five of them. So I went ahead and I cut some more out of the strips that I already had sewn together so that I have a row of the rail fence blocks here, alternate them like we usually do. Then I have the row of the two jelly roll strips sewn together. And again, I brought in some of that faux piece to scrappy looking with another run of those down below. And the bottom of the bag, I was able to, I haven't taken all the threads off these yet. I was able to match up the strips so that these two are the same and these two are the same, which is really kind of cool since I didn't pay attention when I was sewing them together. And then on the other side, I put the stripes on the top and the bottom and in the center, I just left all of those rail fence. And it's just, all the fabrics are the same on both sides, but it just adds that little nod to quirkiness that I kind of like to have my bags have. And then I did the same thing with the straps so that you have this, this tan was really, really light in a lot of places. So I didn't want to have that very wide strip too often. So I went ahead and used it on the handle. So we have the leaves on one side and that on the other. And now this one, I had two pieces that were cut that had this blue and the flowers with the tan, but they were both too short to use for handles. So instead of sewing them together and making one long one and having that seam in the center, I decided to flip flop them so that I had the blue here and then the tan creamy there. And then on the opposite on the other side. So I thought that was just the one handle that is solid and nice. And then the other one's just a little scrappy yet it matches. And on the inside, I had another one from the fat quarter bundle of the blue, but in green this time. So I went ahead and put that inside here, the green with the white and the yellow. And then this on this side. And I went with the purple zipper to tie it in with the outside of the bag and just to give that nice little pop against here. There's my tassel and I used the same lining fabric. I thought it was just stripey fun and bright and it really doesn't contrast, doesn't go with the bag. It's just that little bit of, huh, it's on the inside. So if it bothers you, you can't see it, but it's there if you wanna know you have that little hidden secret funkiness inside your bag. This one, I tried a different little of the key leashes. I just, instead of trying to, let me show you the other one. With this one, you have your, your lobster claw on it and you take it just like you do with other key fobs and stuff. You fold it under and then stitch across this little short spot. And it just always, it's a little bit difficult to do and it's always just a little bit eh. 
for me. I don't really care for the look of it. So this time I went with a little bit of a shorter strap and I made this decision after I'd already created the leash. So I just fold it in half so you have it here. Now I could sew across here, but then it'd be the same thing as sewing the other one and you'd have that little short line of stitch. And so I don't think this, this doesn't bother me. I think that's okay. I don't know if I like the length of it or not. I think it's pretty good, so it's not like hanging down too far into your bag. It's easy to grab and find your keys right there. The only thing I haven't figured out, now one of you guys were talking to me about it in a comment before, and that you also stitch your sides of your bag into your, your lining, into your outside, and I'd love to really know how to do that. I might have to just try to play with it and figure it out because I can't visualize it because I'd love to stitch this part together to give that little bit extra structure so your keys aren't hanging from just your lining that this is also attached into the seam here. Can't really hang it from the top or even from here because your keys will constantly pull on it and after a while the top of your bag will become deformed like that so that doesn't work. I thought adding the little tassel on here was kind of fun. I feel like with the ones on the inside, it's really not necessary to have some type of zipper pull, but it is fun to add a little bit of funk. This bag is the same size. Once it's in the shop, you should be able to see it today and you'll get all the exact measurements, but this one is also about 12 by 14. It all depends on how I trim them up in the end. I'm sure you can tell by now that I really enjoy making these bags. Did I remember to put... Look, I forgot to put my label in this one. I tell you. I just get so excited and sewing it together. And you get like in this... Not really excited, but you get in like this rhythm. And I haven't put enough of these tags in yet to remember to have that muscle memory. So I'm going to have to bring the label out when I start the bag so that when I start sewing it together, I will remember until I get into that habit of doing it. If it was really important, and I don't feel it's that important right now, I could take one of these labels and I could stitch it in somewhere, somehow do, you know, you just kind of, they're slippery, so it's kind of hard to handle. But I could just stitch it in like that. I do have other labels that I could hand stitch in, so maybe I'll pull out one of my old labels and put that in the bag. That way it does have a label still. So thank you for allowing me to talk out loud and to figure that out, because sometimes just speaking out loud, the answer comes to you. The only thing is now I have to figure out where I put those extra labels, my older labels. Because once again, as I rearrange the craft room and clean things up, things get pushed around. So where I thought it used to be, it's probably not there anymore, but no worries. I'll find it. And if I don't, it's not that big of a deal. I have an order for some scrappy Christmas note cards. So I also went through and I cut a bunch of, I think I cut these three quarters of an inch. So while they are scrappy cards in a sense, I did not pull these out of the smallest scraps like I usually save for the cards. I did go into my Christmas scrap bucket and pull things out and then whatever worked, I go ahead and cut it into three quarters of an inch. So for these cards, instead of them being totally wild and crazy, I'm just going to line them up on my interfacing like this, overlap them a little bit, and then stitch them down so that they read as Christmas, and yet they're not hodgepodgey craziness. I find the more I make something, the more I can adjust it to what appeals to me and hopefully appeals to others and take some of your comments that I receive and for those that actually receive the cards in the mail when I send out a thank you or a hey, how you're doing card, I get that extra little feedback. Sometimes you guys don't even realize you're giving me that information. It's just something that you might say of what you like on it. Everyone's very sweet. Nobody ever says, hey, Robin, I hate your cards, right? So I just take those nice little thank yous and the little things that you say that you like about the cards and I mix them all together until I get something that's going to maybe work a little bit better than what I was working on previously because I find that for me, the crafts have to keep changing and adjusting and improving until you find what works for you. As you see with like the tote bags, I keep adding a little bit something extra to them. 
you know, this one has this key leash. This one has this type of key leash, but I've got the pockets under control. Gotten really pretty good at that. There's a double stick fusible tape that I've been using. So I started with the Wonder Tape Wash Away, this uh, double-sided tape that you can use for like hemming pants and stuff like that if you need to hem your pants real quick, if your hem falls or something like that in your pants or your skirt. But it's really great for holding zippers in place until you sew them in because sewing something like this, it's really kind of hard. You have this big opening and then you just kind of lay the zipper in it. And if you put pins in it, it distorts it and everything. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get it to look really nice. So this tape works really good. I've also ordered some Wonder, the Wonder Under tape. I've watched a few videos of people using each of them. And I think the Wonder Under tape is going to be more of what I like. Since I already know that I like that product. Now that Dritz tape is pretty good. But... Some double-sided tapes are just harder to get off the roll, and they kind of, their, their the gumminess goes all the way through and sticks to everything, and it just, it makes it a little bit harder. It makes it a little bit more fussy to work with. So I'm going to try the Wonder Under and see if that works better. It just seems a little bit less fussy when I'm watching the videos. But because I'm making the Christmas note cards, I had to, or I had to, right? You have to put Christmas paper on the inside. And I wanted to show you the Christmas papers that I purchased. See how nice and shiny they are? Now, a lot of times when you go to Joann's or Michael's, you can get like a 50% off, 40% off coupon and stuff. But I find their scrapbooking type paper is rather expensive. And I get that. It's, you know, it's to last, it's, it's archival. It's going to last a lifetime or more and all that. But these cards are just fun to hang out for Christmas and to keep for a few years. They're not going to be something you're going to pass on for generations and generations unless the person who sends you the card puts something special in the when they're writing the card. So I got this. This at uh, I will link it down below if you'd like. It's from Amazon. I only paid, I think it was like $4.95 or $5.95. And you get 60 sheets. It's double-sided. The paper, I don't need it very big. I only need it to be like four and an eighth or four and a quarter. So these are five and a half by eight and a quarter but they have some of the cutest designs and I think it's going to really pop nicely inside of the cards so you've got the birds and the presents and on the other side so you can always use this for non-Christmas too so if you have any left over they labeled this as craft paper again because I don't need it to be archival I like the snowflakes, but I really like the snowflakes on blue. I've seen fabric like that, and I love it. Except it's that sparkly fabric that has that coating-like on it that's really hard to iron and stuff. I don't really care for the fabric that has that coating on it. And then the polka dots with the ho-ho-ho. So I'm going to put these, I'll trim them down, and I'll put them on the inside of the card. So when you open up the flap, you have that pop of fun Christmas fabric uh, paper in there. Because, you know, everything is fabric, so that's all I can think of. But you have that nice pop of the Christmas paper in there, so I think, it, I think it'll come out really nice when those cards are finished. I'll probably start working on them this week coming up. But I need to I need to make more bags. I need to take these leftovers, and I think I'll turn them into either a small project bag. I don't know if I can get much of a tote bag out of it. I could always find a fabric that matches for the other side so if I can get at least 16 and a half inches or so I even saved the little pieces that I cut off then I'll be able to make a bag out of it and if not I'll just go ahead and make a little zipper pouch and then if anyone wants they can have the zipper pouch that matches their tote bag now you can see that these two, especially with the polka dots, that they're the same fabrics, but the bags turned out so differently. This is my favorite side, but this is my favorite bag. And they're both the same size. I thought this one was going to end up being smaller, but they're both the same size. But based on the fact that the stripes go this way, they say don't wear horizontal stripes. It makes you look wider, and it does. It makes this bag look wider than that one. So that's it for me this week. I will be working on the Mondo bag, the Christmas cards, possibly the zipper pouch that goes with these just to get the fabric taken care of. 
I really don't want to put this back into my stash because that's just something else I have to deal with. And if I can just at least get it sewn together and work on a pouch, it doesn't take very long to make a pouch. It's usually, if you just have two fabrics, it only takes like an hour, if that. But because I have to piece some of these together and figure out the size, it'll take a little bit longer. Get that turned into a pouch. Then I'm going to start on my next one. Now remember, as we're coming up close... So as we're coming up close into August, today is July 28th. So on the second live stream in August, which will be the third week, I know that's really confusing, but on August 21st on that live stream Saturday, we're gonna work on a Franken tote together. So I wanna give you guys plenty of heads up so you can have some time to make some components or to gather some components. And with the Franken totes, whatever works is going to work for you. So as you see these, I just pieced together jelly roll strips. You can have finished quilt blocks that you already have. If you're in the Facebook group, go ahead and check out one of our members took their quilt blocks from they're doing, I think they're doing 100 days or quilt block a day or something like that. I'm sorry, I just, was looking at your nice tote bags and I forgot what you actually said about them. But she was taking this, the quilt blocks, building a tote around it, and then she's using that for her scrap fabric. So if she has like, her fabrics are Christmas fabrics, she used the Christmas fabrics to make the block, turned it into a tote bag with Christmas fabrics. So she knows when she looks at that tote bag that it's full of Christmas items. So if this one's full of, it's got Halloween on the front, that's got the Halloween fabrics. If she did a blue tote, it'd be full of the blue fabrics. I thought that was a brilliant way to store everything. So you've got it handmade. It's not necessarily just a bin. You didn't buy a plastic bucket like I did. For me, I needed the plastic sturdy buckets. I know a lot of people make it like this. A lot of people make the fabric bins, but I really needed the sturdy plastic ones. That's why I went with that. But at this point now, if you have these made into tote bags, if you ever need a tote bag for a project or just to go somewhere, you can just, probably not the best idea, but you can dump your fabrics out, grab your tote and go. And then if you use up all of your orange fabrics because you're not really an orange fabric person you can go ahead and fold the tote away and store it away and you're not taking up space plus it's organic and it's fabric and you're not adding more plastic to the world like i did so that's it for me this week thank you so much for hanging out with me and visiting with me every week wicked wednesday videos have become one of my more popular videos each week but a lot of you are really interested in the chatty kind of whip it wednesday videos so i thank you so much for hanging out with me so your code word for this week is funky. Now you can use that any way you want, or you can just let me know if you are a fan of the funky style or not so much. Now I know we all have our own style. By now, if you've been here for a little bit, you already probably figured out that I like funky, quirky, and wonky. These bags kind of remind me of the Brady Bunch and the Partridge family and maybe the 60s and going into the 70s, that quirky, funky type of style from back then. Just the, the flowers and the colors and stuff like that. It also goes in with that boho style that's pretty popular right now. Well, it's always pretty popular. I just love reading your comments. So whatever you guys wanna put down there, go ahead and put it down in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys on Friday. Bye.